Let's look at the active role of consumers. It seems to me that nowadays consumers are more powerful than ever before in all kinds of ways which I'd like to talk about right now. Consumers nowadays expect choices, involvement. They want things their way. They're not prepared to just put up with whatever they're given. And so I think that marketing in general has moved on through different phases. The first was a monologue where, you know, back in the days of radio advertising, people had nothing else to listen to. There was no TV even at that point. And so the advertisers would bombard the citizens with messages. It was a one way process. You know, they were hammered into buying this soap powder or that by um, just loud messages going one way. And they could choose to ignore them, but they didn't really have any say in the matter. So very much a monologue. And then as marketing became more sophisticated and communications were enabled it, there started to be a dialogue where businesses and organizations were ever more mindful of what the consumers thought. You know, they would accept consumers' feedback or inquiries or uh, possibly even ideas. And so marketing became much more of a dialogue between the producers and individual consumers. So it was certainly a change, and that's what I mean by dialogue. But we've gone one step further, because nowadays consumers talk like never before with each other. Of course, consumers have always talked. There's always been word of mouth about the best shop or a good product or a new thing. And that probably goes back to you know, the time of cavemen and cavewomen who you know, would recommend a good hunter or somebody who would um, cook their meat properly. So it's not new, but what is new is the speed and the reach uh, with which consumers can talk with each other. And so marketers are no longer in control of the message. They can put out news, they can try to control it, but actually it's the interpretation by individual consumers and what they say to their friends, often on social media, is what really matters, that becomes the message. So the producers have lost control. We've moved from monologue where they were totally in control to through to dialogue. And uh, now we've come to a, a stage where everybody is talking and perhaps we call that polylog to invent a new word. Um, and so consumers are polyloggers or um, to coin a new word again, ploggers. You know, consumers are talking to each other like never before. So, you know, a bad review or a comment on social media can bring down a product or even a company. And we've seen extreme examples of that. So consumers are very much in control in a way that they've never been before. So businesses and organizations, including in the creative industries and cultural sector, need to be mindful of this. And you know we, we are and we do use some of these things, but it's not just a matter of defensively being careful about these ever more powerful consumers, but actually embracing the power of consumers and working with them to spread messages, to, um, you know, to work with them, to provide the information they need, to be transparent with them, to be open and honest if we make a mistake or something isn't quite right, to fix things well, because this can be a, a positive opportunity if people talk about it in a positive way. So there are examples where businesses have made mistakes but actually enhanced their reputations by being open and honest, uh, being straightforward, apologizing directly, perhaps giving some kind of compensation or just a voucher. And customers have turned from being angry to being actually quite pleased and have told their friends in a very positive way about what the airline or the, the producer or whatever it might be has done for them in correcting a mistake. So again, consumers are so, so powerful nowadays. Now businesses can work with consumers to get ideas. And we talk about you know, crowd sourcing um, of ideas. Um, we talk about crowdfunding, which is a bit different, which is getting money from the crowd, you know, the, the masses of people out there. 
but we can also get ideas from, from them as well. And this might be simply feedback about a product and how it can be improved or some comment or enhancement or the next thing that um, consumers want as an enhancement to a service, for example. But we can be much more systematic than that and even build our business models around it. And you know, the Lego Corporation has in recent years started to welcome the ideas from consumers, from their fans who use their bricks to make all kinds of things. And they're incorporating the ideas of consumers into their business in a kind of partnership way rather than simply um, just listening and, and giving prizes for nice ideas. And consumers also want to participate in you know, television. They no longer want to just sit watching. They will tweet if there's a political discussion. You know, they, will, they will tweet using the hashtag and have their say. It's you know, digital heckling, if you will, or asking a question or diverting and influencing the debate live in real time. And this is what consumers want. Um, this applies to game shows where consumers want to sit by the television watching the performers, but also voting. And this is enabled by modern technology. And this draws people in. This is what people want. And it's, you know, it's a great way to engage customers and you know, allow them to be more involved. Um, and there are lots of other ways that consumers can be involved. Another one that comes to mind is um, one of the uh, shows on Netflix uh, in the Black Mirror series was uh, enabled the viewer at home to decide the ending of the TV program. So this is you know, a huge amount of interaction and influence that consumers have, not just being passive. And nowadays, consumers also want to be creators. We've seen citizen journalists, you know, the T-shirt manufacturer and designer Threadless in the UK, you know, doesn't have a design department, doesn't need one because the design department is the whole world. Anybody can suggest a design. They put it up to see if there's any interest in it. If there's enough interest, they will then produce it, perhaps in limited quantities, and they will give a cut to the designer. So consumers can also be creators you know, within the business without being part directly of that business. So it gets very complicated, but I think extremely exciting how we can harness the power of consumers, whether it's marketing or ideas or distribution or getting their involvement so that we have a closer relationship with consumers. And those are just a few examples. You know, TripAdvisor comes to mind based on you know the reviews not of their professional hotel uh, inspectors but of ordinary people ordinary customers who willingly participate because they want to share their experience they want to inform their fellow consumers and you know there's a whole business built on that involvement so in all kinds of ways and we can think of many more and we can watch out for future developments in this area you know, consumers are becoming even more active. We can't, it's so dangerous to trust them as just passive, you know, punters to whom we can sell stuff and who will listen to our messages and do what they're told. Not at all. I think we need to increasingly regard uh, consumers and customers and clients as partners so that we can develop the business, uh, our businesses around their changing needs. So be aware, watch out, um, in daily life for the active role of consumers. Watch yourself as a consumer. You want to be more active. And in terms of creative entrepreneurship, we need to harness and embrace the growing and active role of consumers in modern day commerce.